All right. This is kind of a test run. Something I hope to do more often. Uh, live stream my own practicing. I've got a show 24 days out in Mystic, Connecticut, and I got to get in shape. So that's what I'll be doing. Start out with um, some scales. And then hopefully move to some blues and boogie before it gets too late. It's already like almost 10 o'clock here. So I always like to start out with about 10, 20 minutes of scales. That's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, everybody can view this, but only members are able to comment. So that's something I'm offering just to my members of my channel. Feel free to come and go. I'm going to be giving a little commentary on what I'm doing so that it makes sense. So I'm going to put the metronome on here while I'm doing scales just to warm up my fingers a little bit. Set it around, let's do like 95 today. Feel free to put me on mute and practice along with me wherever you are. This way we all get our piano practice in. Sometimes you gotta do it at 10 p.m. like me. Just liking to move my fingers around a little bit so that I can uh, start to feel warmed up. Just letting my fingers warm up. Can't really hurry this process. I'm so out of shape that it's probably gonna take about really a half hour of this before I feel warmed up, but I'm afraid I'm gonna run out of time. So I'm gonna get to some songs soon. Scott. <laughs> nice. Good to see you, buddy. Scott, where are you located? Are you in England? Doing some hand and exercises over the A minor harmonic scale. I'm going to change keys. I'm going to 
to F. I'm just warming up still if you're joining me right now. Trying to get my fingers warmed up. I know what it feels like when they're warmed up. And I don't feel like that yet. So I'm just doing some hand and exercises over the F major scale. This keeps me accountable though because I got to practice every day. And so you see kids were awake late, yada yada yada, everything was happening during the day. I did not get to practice until pretty much 10 o'clock at night. That's when I'm starting, but you know, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. People come to a show, they don't want to hear why you didn't have time to practice. Super sloppy, but you know, I just I also gotta move my hands fast. Part of my warm up. So sloppy, so out of sync, you know, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, are they in sync? I can do it in sync at a slower tempo. If I double it, so far so good. move to B flat. Sometimes I throw in some licks and while I'm while I'm warming up just to see if I'm warm yet. I mean if, if they're working yet. And no, not yet. B flat's always a good one though. B flat's kind of a kicker to get really nice I'm don't have it nice right now
It's probably the last scale I'm going to do before I jump into some songs. Just trying some 16th notes. Gonna accent the downbeats. One. Hard to talk. <laughs> Hard to talk at the same time. So I'm gonna be accenting the downbeats and see if that helps me kind of sync up. to do this from Henry Butler uh, when I was 16 we had a lesson our first lesson together and he said you gotta learn all your major scales and they showed me how to practice them or how he practiced them and in terms of accenting different rhythms in the scale um, so like every second beat every third beat every fourth every fifth every sixth every seventh so I'm doing every four right now one one If I wanted to do 16th notes with every third, it would sound like, let's see. Oh, it got off. It's hard to do the turn. That's worth working on. Uh, let's see. It's a little fast. So there I was doing eighth notes, but accenting every third. So I was going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So practicing your scales in that way with a metronome will let you hear different rhythmic groupings superimposed on a steady uh, click. All right. I love practicing scales. I could do that all night. Uh, I know that time is running out for me though, so I'm going to do some scales. I love also the metronome during, I mean, some uh, songs. I was thinking about this song, The Honky Tonk Train. I haven't done that in a while. That one is a very demanding left hand. Oops, let me change this to a tempo that's manageable. Probably like 80. Let's see. One, two, three, four, one. It's a little fast. 75. I don't want to work that hard right now. 70. There we go. So this would be kind of endurance training. Trying to get my left hand. My left hand has gotten weak over the last two years. I've hardly performed at all. I've been in grad school. I used to perform anywhere from four to seven nights a week, uh, you know, for many, many years. So I was in great shape, but now it's going to tire me out to play this song for 10 minutes. So I'm going to 
I'm going to try to push it. I'm going to try to do 10 minutes. It's 10 10 right now. Try to keep this left hand going till 10 20. the next part so I'm just gonna let it come around again pick up where I left off Did it. Do it again. Feels like I'm playing in slow motion. I usually play this song much faster. to rush when I go to the five. So I really gotta concentrate on keeping that locked in. So that's about the length of the song. Definitely feeling it in my left hand a little bit. It's a demanding left hand to keep going. I'm using a lot of arm, not so much hand 
Some, I'm using a little wrist. I'm not using hardly any finger movement. It's mostly my, my elbow and my wrist. So I'll play the whole song again. Right. And again, what I'm trying to do is, is train my left hand. I'm trying to get some endurance back. Maybe I'll start from the intro. Need a little break, actually. Whew. Ooh, what was the intro? This is a whole other thing. I, I may have forgotten the intro. Oh, there we go. Sometimes if you can remember the first few <laughs> notes. I'm going to put the metronome on so I... Because I'm practicing for, for a show. I, I want to make sure my left hand does not rush every time I get to the five. So, you know, if you're not used to the metronome, this might sound annoying. But for me, it's really a, a make it or break it type of deal. And I got to use the metronome. I like it on two and four.
so pretty robotic in a way, but it's I'm using it kind of as a finger exercise and strengthening exercise. So I'm going to probably do it again. Probably kick up the tempo here a little bit. Let's kick it up to 75. It's so hard to come in with the metronome on two. I remember when we were trying to record this one time with a, uh, a piano duo I was doing uh, called the Boogie Kings, and we were recording our CD, and we had the click track on like this. And to come in, you gotta be two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Hmm. Takes a minute. It's hard to click that in with that intro for some reason. stuck on that one. up I forgot the next forgot the next course so I'm just kind of fooling around until I get back around because I want to keep this left hand going now I don't know what I'm doing That's where the song would end. I want to keep this left hand going a little bit longer. I'm feeling good now. I'm not getting tired anymore. You know, after about like burns for like within the first 10 minutes, you keep going. Your body switches energy systems and you can go much longer. So that's where I'm in. It's like running on the treadmill. So I'm just going to try some different uh, rhythmic improvisation 
with my right hand, try to keep my left hand, my focus is on my left hand staying in time with that click. Left hands doesn't feel tired, but it's getting tired. Because I notice instead of this, sometimes I'm, I'm switching to this. My hand is just doing it automatically because it's getting tired. Sorry, I kicked the camera. So if you listen, sometimes it's doing this, which isn't terrible, it can still pass. It's not the same. It's not really the same as that. That's one of my favorite licks in the whole song. Is when you get going fast. I gotta turn the air conditioner on. It's hot as hell. So when you get, so now I'm at 80, you know what, let's, let's take a chance. Let's go up to 85. It's going to be pretty fast.
I mean, but really, that's a little... <laughs> that's too fast. Nobody plays that fast. It's not really musical. 80 is probably the fastest. It's fun, but it's just kind of a speed demon exercise. So I'm really checking that 5 to the 1 passage, because my every time I go... hand wants to s speed up if that's possible So if you're just joining us, I'm really focusing on training, getting my endurance back up with my left hand right now. And I chose the uh, Honky Tonk Train Blues by Meadlux Lewis. That left hand is, is probably one of the more physically demanding left hands out there because it's literally just three notes over and over and over pounded in that shuffle rhythm. And I have the metronome on two and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. If I can even count in time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, and two, three, four. One, two, three. I'm not even really worried about what I'm playing the right hand. I mean, I went through the song a few times. But if I challenge the rhythms with my right hand, to challenge the independence of my left hand. See, I'm focusing on the left hand, staying in time with the metronome. And I'm trying to distract it with difficult, tricky things in the right hand in the hopes that I can get it to stay steady. Because I know if I can improvise with tricky things and have my mind divided like that when I go to play the song that I've been playing for 20 years I'm not going to have a problem with it but that left hand has to be solid so I'll run through the song one more time this time with no metronome just to kind of wrap it up before I call it a night
I could only remember the damn song. Hold on. There's something in there I'm missing. You notice that when I go to the five, I'm my left hand is doing it. He's so sneaky. I'm not telling him to do that. I'm telling him to go. So maybe I'm playing it a little too fast. Let's start over. Scott, all right, we got a question. 
How does it let intention feel? You mean how do I f perceive tension? Um, you know, I, I don't remember uh, how tension feels because what I feel now is like muscle tiredness as if you went to the gym and did a lot of repetitions. So I'm feeling like muscle fatigue. Uh, it can be kind of a burning sensation at first, and then that'll go away. Uh, for me, that goes away, and it, and then I'm fine. Like running first 10 minutes on a treadmill, how it's kind of a struggle. And then all of a sudden, something is your body changes energy systems, switches to more aerobic glycolysis, and then you get that second wind kind of. Um, so that's what I feel in my left hand. So right now, it just feels like it's not responding as quickly, so I know it's tired. But I don't feel a burning, and I don't feel achiness. But I do remember feeling those things, you know, as a kid trying to play this uh, music. I remember, especially with this left hand. The walking bass line, which is why I, you know, I used to, I used to play a song, and then halfway through the song, I get that burning, and so my hand figured out to reinforce the pinky with other fingers, and also adopt this kind of spread position, like an L shape almost. Uh, so I play like this, where all my fingers are reinforcing the pinky finger when it gets tired. So even if I don't use them now, they still kind of drift over there. And I use a lot of wrist rotation. I probably tried to play it like a lot of beginning students of mine try to play the walking bass line with their hand above the keys and they're reaching down and basically moving their fingers. Like this. And that'll kill you. Oh, man, that, 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 <laughs> you can't play very long like that. At least I've never, I haven't been able to and I've never seen anyone who could. Most people who play the walking bass line professionally and, and practically, they've figured out how to rely on big hand movements. So for this one, my kind of cheat code for that is I curl my second finger under. So I'm actually playing with the nail and that up to that first little knuckle uh, on my second finger. Does that kind of answer your question? Hope so. It's a good question. That's right. And, uh, you know, one thing I tell students, so like, let's say I'm doing this. So I did it for almost a half hour, that bass line. If I'm tired, I'll slow it down. But I'll, so that I can keep playing it and keep getting those repetitions in. But it gives my hand a chance to take a little break. You can also make some kind of cool discoveries sometimes um, by playing things that are way slower than they normally go. They start to sound different. They take on a different kind of spirit.
So, also, Scott, uh, by the way, I don't know if you heard my little shout out at the beginning, but thank you for becoming a member. Really appreciate that. And we get this little insider's view here. Um, and, uh, yeah. The other thing is, yeah, if you're, if you know, if you're just starting out, like, say, with Honky Tonk Train, don't push it too hard too fast. I remember, for me, the tenths, like, in After Hours. That used to... I would play, I would practice that maybe 10 minutes straight, and then my hand would be almost like cramped in this position. Uh, so part of it is just a strength thing, I think. If you're starting to feel a little tense, um, also check out my video about relieving hand tension. I think you've seen that. But that is a good exercise if you really take it to heart and make that a big part of your practice where you're just relaxing on each key. That can really help train your overall hand to relax when you're using it. Um, all right, nice. Um, so, my point was, if you're beginning something, you're getting tense, take a break. Pick it up again tomorrow. Play something else in the meantime. Um, one thing you might find is that if you spread your hand in this octave position, it's a relief from playing things like this. If I went all of a sudden to... My hand, my arm feels more relaxed because I'm using it in a totally different way. So... I would sometimes if I'm playing a song and it has to stretch on, if it's at a party or something, I'll, I would switch between this sort of bass line and this one. Because um, then when you get tired with this, this one is kind of a relief. So you can go back and forth. I actually didn't remember that I used to do that until just now. <laughs> so there you go. That is something I don't even tell my students because I forgot about.
Boy, that is a big relief. That's in uh, in St. Louis Blues when I switch from the walking, you know, that fast walking to the, this. That's like such a relief on my head because that that's a song that still I barely make it through. Even when I was in the best shape, that is a killer. And the more in shape you are, the faster you want to push that walking bass, and it just gets way out of hand. Um, but but by the end of that song, you can bet my left hand needs like a few minutes. That's why it's good to take a break after that song, talk to the audience a little bit for a few minutes, to just give your hand a chance to like recover. Uh, the left hand, I mean. This is... But there, you switch from that to quarter notes. And it's such a relief on the hand. So like I could do that for a minute, be nicely recovered and return to the, that or the walking. All right. Well, thanks guys for joining me. Helps me be accountable, helps me make that time to practice, and hopefully it helps you guys make that time to practice too. So I've only got 24 days left until my, my show in Mystic, Connecticut at the Arts Festival. So this is my journey here to uh, get back in shape. As it gets closer, I'm going to be asking you guys to help me choose my set list uh, from a list of songs that I know and that I've been practicing, which you'll see happen too. Um, so then you'll see the whole process I go through from doing finger exercises, getting my left hand in shape again, to actually practicing stylistically the song, and then finally practicing uh, with distractions is the last, uh, um, yeah. I know you do, Scott, thank you. Yes, you are the man. Were you practicing too? Let me know, are you practicing right now, Scott? Because that's kind of, Kind of one of my hopes is that some people will, 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 you know, this will inspire you guys to practice too. It's easy to say, man, I had a long day, I'm tired. But if you just put in 15 to 20 minutes a day, that's better than watching TV or something for 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, and actually, you can combine the two. You can put a screen right here and, and watch. <laughs> okay. All right. Good man. All right. So you, you were practicing before and then I distracted you. <laughs> so I had the opposite effect. <laughs> but thanks for tuning in, Scott. Two hours a day, six days a week. That is really good, man. That is really good. I envy you. I really do. I remember when I was getting five hours seven days a week now that was that was some intense stuff but uh but i definitely got a lot of things under my fingers during that time so that is great i i think of half hour a day as kind of maintenance um an hour a day you can probably make you can make some good progress depending how focused you are. Two hours a day, six days a week, that's great, man. That That is great. Here's the other thing. So once I am, I do feel kind of warmed up now. So now it's like fun to play. And I think everyone over here has gone to bed, so I might just play a little bit more whatever comes to mind sort of thing. Uh, maybe, maybe this in E flat is classified.
Fingers aren't moving so well in this key. Also, we're in this electronic mode of my piano, so it doesn't have that nice acoustic sound. Uh, and that actually really makes a difference to the playability. You really can't get away with things with this with this uh, electronic sample they have here. Like you have to be super precise, which is good, I guess. But if it were acoustic, it would blend together a little more. You could get away with a little more sloppiness. All right. I think I'm done. Thanks for tuning in, guys, especially Scott. Thanks for joining and chatting, asking some questions. Um, these might be kind of unscheduled for a while until I find a rhythm for it. But uh, I'll just be popping up doing live stream practicing, hoping to inspire you guys to practice as well. And for my members, chance to ask questions and stuff. All righty. You guys have a good night. Thanks, Scott.